So more specifically, I'm going to present a type continuation passing translation for lexical effect handlers. But before I get to this, uh, let me talk a bit about uh, effect handlers in general. Effect handlers are a really cool language feature that was introduced by Plotkin and uh, Bretner. And if you want to know more about the theoretical foundations, I recommend this paper, An Introduction to Algebraic Effects and Handlers. But if you're a more practical person, then I recommend you check out one of these languages with uh, support for effect handlers. For example, F, Coca, Lynx, Frank, Helium, or Effect, with a K, which is in fact the language we are working on. So uh, let me introduce, uh, give you a bit of an overview of how effect handlers work using an example. And we're going to work with a stream of numbers. So uh, when programming with effect handlers, there are three important concepts. The first one are effect signatures. Here we see an example of an effect signature for an effect emit. It takes a parameter x of type int and returns unit. The second uh, important component are effectful functions. This is an example of an effectful function range, which generates a range of values. It uh, takes i and n and returns unit. And usually, in languages with effect handlers, uh, functions are also annotated to um, with, uh, with which effects they have. In this example, range has the emit effect. And so if i is smaller than n, then we do emit i, and then recurse uh, with a larger uh, value, or else we immediately return unit. Now, uh, it is at this point uh, not entirely, uh, not clear what emit actually means. It's just, we're just emitting values uh, to the context. To give meaning to effect operations, uh, that's uh, the third important concept, there are effect handlers. And this is an example of a function gathers, which gathers all uh, emitted values into, into a list. It takes an effectful program, which has the emit effect, and it itself has no effects. And uh, the way it works is it calls uh, the program proc under a new effect handler, and then returns the empty list nil. Now the handler implementation, that's what after, what's after this uh, with emit, gets the parameter x, the emitted value, but also, and that's, make, that's what makes effect handlers interesting, a resumption k. And this resumption k allows us to jump back into the context where the effect was raised. And in this example, we are resuming with the resumption k, with the unit value, get the rest of emitted values x's, and then return, we return a const cell that contains the emitted value x and the rest of the values x's. Now, um, we've seen these uh, three important concepts. Let's put everything together. Here in this program, we are generating a range of values and then gathering them into a list. This overall program is pure, and it will compute uh, the list 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. OK. Now, uh, we've seen one example, use case, of effect handlers, but there are, in fact, many. They subsume a number of useful language features, like what we see in gener generators, but also exceptions, but also things like async I.O. or uh, very lightweight concurrency, but also more exotic things, because uh, these resumptions allow us to resume to the same context more than once with a different value, which allows us to perform some kind of backtracking search and enables uh, logic programming, but also probabilistic programming and uh, reverse mode automatic differentiation, and there's a, there's a huge number of use cases. And the cool thing is that uh, with effect handlers, we can compose all of these into the same program. We have, can have interesting combinations of different kinds of effects, um, and it all, well, just works, or at least it does something. But it's important to note that the, the, uh, these effect handlers are usually uh, are always nested, and this nesting um, is uh, rather important. Uh, to understand why, let's look at another example. And here we are using effect handlers for exceptions. So um, to um, get exception-like behavior with effect handlers, we simply ignore the resumption and never resume. This makes the uh, effect handler jump out of the uh, current context. So we install an uh, effect handler that um, ignores the resumption and returns one immediately. And then we define a local function abort that throws an exception. Then we install a second handler that um, ignores the resumption and returns to the context. And then we call abort under this second handler. And to get an intuition to how effect handlers work operationally, let's step through this program. So we start with the empty stack. And now the first handler will push a special handler frame onto the stack. And this handler fr frame contains a tag, XE, for the uh, effect we are uh, handling, but also the handler implementation. Now we substitute this uh, local definition, abort. And now the second handler will push, um, again, a special frame with this uh, exception tag and also uh, with the hand hand implementation. Now we execute the function call. And now um, using an effect operation will trigger stack unwinding. 
and the stack is unwound until a matching tag is found. And in this example, the tag is immediately found, so we immediately execute the uh, handler implementation, which returns two. And uh, whenever we return through a handler frame, we just um, discard it. And now we're returning two to the empty stack, and we're done. The program is over. And um, this is how traditional effect handlers work. Uh, they um, uh, if effect operations are handled by the dynamically closest handler, and this is very similar to dynamic scoping. And this is rather powerful. But consider this refactoring of the same program, and here we've uh, factored this uh, second effect handler that immediately returns two, returns two into a separate function. And this is a common pack pattern. Uh, people do this a lot. But uh, this second function could be arbitrarily far away. And so just by looking at the program, it is not so immediately clear anymore where this exception is that abort uses is handled. We have to know that inside of catch2, there will it, the program will be called um, under a handler for the exception effect. And this is okay, we can guess this uh, by um, looking at the types, but um, this causes a number of uh, problems, which is well known. Um, and so the solution are lexical effect handlers, um, because uh, the problem was recognized in 2016 in accepting blame for safe tunnel exceptions, and I highly recommend this uh, paper, you should uh, read it. And then later this, uh, program, uh, this problem was generalized from exceptions to effect, hand effect handlers, uh, and then there are um, a number of papers on lexical effect handlers, like Binders by Day and um, our paper Effects as Capabilities. And um, effect hand lexical effect handlers are different from the traditional effect handlers. Um, and let's again look at our example, but this time with lexical effect handlers. Now, each handler introduces a, a term level capability. And in this example, the first handler introduces XC1, and the second handler introduces XC2. And to use an effect operation, we have to use the capability. And now, just by lexical reasoning, it is immediately clear that um, this uh, um, call to XC1 will always abort to the handler that introduced the capability. Uh, let's again see how this program executes. We start with the empty stack. And again, we push a special handler frame, but this, times it, this time it uh, contains a freshly generated label uh, at 4A2. And we also substitute this label for the capability. Now we substitute the function. And again, we push a special frame that contains another unique freshly generated label. Now we execute the function call, and now again we start stack unwinding, but this time we are um, looking for a matching label, the one that um, was introduced by the handler. And in this example, the matching label is not immediately found, so we continue searching, and now it's immediately found, and the program returns one to the empty stack, and, um, and it's done, it's over. Okay, so this was the difference between um, lexical effect handlers and dynamic effect handlers. They are based on capability passing and they enable lexical reasoning. Um, and this is the refactored example uh, once again, and we can see that it's immediately clear that just by this connection between the introduction of XC1 and its use, that abort will always, no matter what happens, abort to this very, very handler. Okay. Now, um, another interesting uh, aspect of language with effect handlers uh, is effect safety. And it, um, intuitively, it means that all effect operations are uh, eventually handled. And uh, with lexical effect handlers, that means that these capabilities shall not, shall not escape the handler that uh, introduced them. And this is a well-known problem with a well-known solution. So um, we introduce regions and also subregion evidence. And this follows monadic regions and lightweight monadic regions. Um, this is the example in uh, its full explicitness. So each handler now introduces a region. In this example, R1. Uh, and um, each statement is checked in a region. The overall statement is checked in the top-level region. And each handler also introduces evidence that the freshly introduced region, R1, is inside of the enclosing region, in this case, top. Moreover, it introduces a capability that uh, has to be called, has to be used in the uh, freshly generated region or any subregion of it. Uh, functions can be region polymorphic. In this example, abort abstracts over, uh, for, says for all regions R, and intuitively this region will be the region at the at the call side. Uh, to use an effect operation, we have to um, supply explicit evidence that the current region is inside of the region of the capability. So in this example here, um, do x1 this n witnesses that R is inside of um, R1. Okay, now with this all out of the way. Onto our actual contribution, what we're actually doing. So we are implementing lexical effect handlers by translation to continuation passing style in pure system F. And uh, there will be no runtime support. 
uh, we've seen intuitively that the operational semantics require special stack frames and labels and then a stack unwinding and a search for those. Uh, there will be none of this. And of course there will be none of this because in CPS there is no stack. And in system F there are no labels. So um, how are we going to do it? Well, I'll give you some intuition. Uh, the program on the left that we've uh, just seen here uh, will be translated to the program on the right in continuation passing style. Uh, and we see that um, region abstractions become type, type abstractions and evidence abstractions become term abstractions. And uh, capabilities directly are the ha handler implementation. So to use a capability, we call it with the argument. Moreover, we are using evidence to move the resulting computa computation into the correct region. Here in this example, we're using um, macros like run CPS and lift they, for explanation, but we can expand those and then it's a pure term in a system F with lots of abstractions, lots of continuations, lots of things going on. But the upside of it all is uh, if we beta reduce and inline this term, it reduces to this. It immediately returns one. Uh, it, uh, it's pretty clear that this should be possible because all handlers and everything in this program is known. But let me stress that we do not special case anything regarding exceptions or handlers, we do not deal with any fresh labels or nothing. It's just pure beta reduction and inlining. And those are well-known techniques in the optimization of programs. So uh, in the paper, we prove a number of theorems. Uh, the first one is that we translate well-typed programs to well-typed terms in uh, system F in continuation passing style. And the region becomes the answer type somehow, an idea that goes back to Hayo Thielecke. This also means that uh, our uh, programs inherit all cool properties that system F has. For example, that they never go wrong, that they always terminate. Some parametricity stuff could be uh, applied and so on and so on. Uh, the other, uh, and, and this uh, theorem is mechanized in, in the COP. The other thing we prove is simulation. So we've seen this machine and we say that if a machine state M steps to a machine state M prime, then the translation of the machine state in zero or more steps steps to the translation of uh, M prime. And we do so without any stack, without any labels, and without any runtime support. And moreover, we do this without any uh, data types, any tags, and um, no loops, no recursion, nothing, just uh, pure system F. And um, this uh, is a slightly weaker version of this. So we have a pen and paper proof of this theorem, but we also have a cock mechanization of a slightly uh, weaker, weaker theorem. Uh, to see where all of this um, could go, consider this motivating example that I've shown um, in the beginning. And if we CPS translate it, and then again apply inlining and beta reduction, but uh, in this case also apply static argument translation and quantification, uh, we get the following nice uh, little uh, loop that builds up um, continuation closures, and then finally uh, unwinds the stack by calling the current continuation, um, and that's it. All, all handlers are, are gone. Um, there's no intermediate data structure. And even in more general um, programs, uh, this would work uniformly for all kinds of effects and all combinations of those, those effects. So to summarize, um, we've seen uh, intuitively lexical effect handlers. We've seen their operational semantics. We've seen the continuation passing translation of those. And there's a lot more details in the paper. Also, let me briefly advertise my talk tomorrow. It's called Compiling Effect Tenders in Capability Passing Style. And there we will present a theorem that under certain conditions guarantees that we fully eliminate all handler introductions and uh, eliminations. And it also will present some benchmarks, some conducted by us, some conducted by others. And with this, I'm looking forward to your questions. Hi, I was wondering if you see this as more of a theoretical result, or do you also have uh, hopes of implementing it in a uh, compiler for effects? Yes, um, we do have hopes of implementing it uh, as a compiler for a language with effect handlers, and we are very actively working on it. Yeah. Hi, um, I was wondering if you could provide any intuition for why the region becomes the answer type. Is there like some interpretation for the semantics that's intuitive? So the intuition is a bit, um, the region stands for the context. And uh, the answer type um, also stands for the context. And uh, usually the answer type intuitively is the type at the delimiter that you have to return uh, when you are jumping to this delimiter. But this can be more structured. It cannot only be a simple type, it can also be a computation. 
And in this case, you get um, like a, a richer context and a richer interaction with the stuff that's outside of the delimiter. So is this uh, is this key to um, like the nesting of of these these scopes, where the, the richer context provides a context for a context for an ultimate answer type? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thanks. So uh, this is very interesting. <laughs> Part of the well, maybe the, the main original motivation for introducing these kind of lexical effect handler semantics was to provide stronger uh, abstraction properties, which are captured in uh, parametricity result uh, in, uh, in, in in these papers. Um, so I guess I'm wondering, uh, does that kind of does that parametricity result fall out from the parametricity of system F in your translation, or? Or, or is it a separate thing? We've uh, tried. So, yeah, almost, almost. Uh, we also need, um, would need, but we, but so we haven't done it. But we, if we wanted to do it, we'd also need this parametricity result by um, Hayo Thielecke, who essentially says that um, functions in CPS with a polymorphic answer type are pure because they cannot do anything funny with the context except calling the continuation to to return to it. And I believe, I guess, it should, should work then. I'm not sure. Cool. Thanks. All right. Let's uh, thank the speaker again, and be sure to check out his talk tomorrow. <laughs>